I know. I invented that in League of Legends. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> the original. No, often imitated, but can never be duplicated. <laughs> the Monty. <laughs> Picks and bans. Wow, bans going really fast. Cassiopeia ban. Actually against uh, Frozen. Well, again, Frozen is known for his Cassiopeia and his yeah. Victor play in solo queue. So it's now that we've actually seen it come to the fore, in fact, I, I do think it was a little bit of styling from SK Telecom to try and play that Cassiopeia against Frozen in their match. But yes, he is very cool. well known. Janaban, okay. Yeah, Morgana, I think Morgana just such a necessary ban right now. Nobody else plays this top lane Morgana, and it is just a pain in the ass to deal with. That pocket pick, very potent from Trace. Yeah, and there's a LeBlanc ban. Yeah, no surprise there. That is, yep. you want to remove Frozen's abilities and make plays, and almost getting him onto Lulu is a little bit better. Early pick for the Jarvan. Yeah, you know, we've been seeing Jarvan fall farther and farther down the pick phases, but I am goes for the first pick here. You know, do you feel like this gives too much to Jin Air? I don't, I don't know if Jarvan is really a first pick quality jungler right now. Well, you either have to take, I think, the Jarvan or the Nar coming in. Yeah. Because if you give up both, you run into that Narvan combo that is yeah. pretty damn deadly. You can't give that away. That because is true. Because the thing about having both of those champions together at the moment is that it really allows you to dictate team fights because you yeah. basically can engage at will. And so by virtue of that, you can guarantee yourself almost a NAR ultimate every time. So Cassidy, however, will be the takeaway from Jin Air along with Corky. So they may give the Narvan combo over to IM. And by all means, IM should take it. Yeah, it looks like they will. We'll see what they add to that, though. Frozen cycling through a lot of champions. They're going to grab the Thresh as well. It's going to be good comboing with it. So we're going to have an interesting support pick on the Jin Air side. I don't think we're going to see Teemo. We'll see. I'd love to see GBM's Azir or Victor. <laughs> GBM, I think, is just trolling Frozen a little bit right here yeah. with the Victor hover. He also has Teleport Revive for his summoner spells at the moment. <laughs> Zareth is open. And why not see him blind pick that? Looks like they're waiting for that mid pick to last. We'll see. Oh, GBM. Yeah, what a I, troll. I, I think they definitely should be going for a pick composition right now. I am having that big wombo from Nar and Jarvan. So yeah, you're going to need to play around that. Yeah, I think Andy Leeson's very smart for setting up these picks. And now you've got a flex pick. Very nice. And a possible counter pick coming in last for now, Janair. We've seen Space try out the Callista with Mad Life, and it hasn't really worked yet. Callista is a champion that people see a lot of potential in, but no one's quite figured out how to make it work yet. <laughs> but I would love to see the support Vagar again. No, I, I like the Syndra here. Though. Put the lane pressure on, and yeah. Janair is going to have to respond to this. And with GVM's champion pool, he may have a little bit of trouble. He may try and play Zareth into this and just help out with his ultimate in terms of creating picks. But still, he's going to need to stay back. Now, GVM, his Jace play, he's only played it one game, but it hasn't been the best that we've seen. Mm. Instead, they may, oh, they're going to take away the Zareth. Very interesting. Okay. Well, I think that's smart to take that away from Gank by Mom. He's been so good with it. We'll see what they decide to go with now. It's not dots at all. His hot his tie is Houndstooth today, though. It's oh, you're right. you're right. So, well, I, I thought it was Stripes when they were going past it before, but I guess I was wrong then as well. Oh, maybe ah, okay. Playing yeah. a Mundo just to run some interference in the front line. We have seen Mundo do very well against Nahar when CJ played it with the Sunfire first to keep Nahar out of team fights yeah. until late in the game. Well, I think that's a, a good build to go with because you're just going to get that Sunfire cape faster than Nahar can really build into what he needs to be big in team fights. And so you really get a lot of early, I feel like, dragon control and lane pushing power out of that. Well, yeah, and you, it just allows you to dictate the, phase, the, the, uh, the pace of the game better yeah. because when you have the... When you have the Sunfire Mundo, he can outpush even like a Trinity Force Nar, which is something that we've seen uh, CJ running because CJ really has de-emphasized Nar in their drafts to yeah. the degree that it, would GE just ban the Mundo and took the Nar, and that actually saw a lot of success for them when they played against 
CJ. So if Trey go, Trace goes for the Sunfire, he can keep Gnar out of team fights until very, very late in the game. And at that point, Mundo's ultimate really does give him an advantage, and he's able to zone out carries very efficiently in that way. So if Gnar bounces in and gets a three-man ult, there's no follow-up because your carries are all dealing with Mundo. It's not too big of a problem. Very cool. Well, things are locked in. It looks like Frozen taking a heal, actually for a second summoner spell. Something I don't know if we've seen a whole lot of on Zara. Yeah, we have. If there's an all-in okay. potential, uh, there's definitely an issue. You know, though, I'm a bit surprised that we didn't see the Ari pick up against Zareth. That is one of GPM's yeah. favorite champions, and he has point. played it uh, as a counter pick to the Zareth before. Oh, they picked that Kassan in so early. Maybe they just wanted the Mundo for safety. Who knows? Let's get in the game and find out. School is in session, guys. <laughs> Professor has arrived. <laughs> Incredible Miracle versus Jyn'Air Green Wings. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. That cheer for Jyn'Air getting louder every week, and for good reason. Yeah, finally, Jyn'Air fielding a very competitive team after a lot of investment. And yeah. it's been interesting, too, because their StarCraft team was seeing so much success to the degree that Jyn'Air was actually putting pictures of SOS and the entire StarCraft team on the sides of their planes. No joke. You can yeah. look it up. Yeah. The uh, Jyn'Air StarCraft planes. like. And uh, SOS the, is so good, though. Oh, SOS man. is awesome. Yeah, he's even Protoss, and so for me to say I like a player that's a Protoss, that's a big he's, deal. He's a weird Protoss player, though. Very that's creative, why I like him. very that's creative, true. very fun play. Deserves to be on a plane. Well, we'll see if any of these guys get their time on a plane. So if uh, if Frozen is a big Cassiopeia player and he gets to be on a plane, does that mean we've got snakes <laughs> on a plane? I then? think it does. I think so, too. Frozen needs to be yep. on, on Jyn Air. Oh, there's some fans of Frozen right there. And I am. Yeah. One of the new handsome gentlemen. Man, and by the way, if you go back and look at Champion Summer, this guy has lost so much weight, it is ridiculous. So, becoming popular with the ladies due to his charming good looks. Well, he's just setting up for his future career in K-pop after the, uh, the league thing ends, I suppose. <laughs> You're doing the same thing, aren't you, Doa? Yeah, well, I mean, I've already got some open contracts. I've got some <laughs> offers, you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna leave just yet, but yeah. All right, well, you know, GBM running this cast in the mid lane, he's still going to have that assassination potential against Frozen, uh, like he would with Ari. So, I mean, I understand why he's playing it. I just think it's a harder early matchup than Xerath. Uh, versus Ari, just because you don't have as much range to play with. Uh, lane swap coming in from Jyn Air. They don't want to be in a lane against Sivir, so uh, just try and skip the harassment period from levels one through five that Sonstar and Tucson would have. A lot of potential there, especially if Che gets grabbed. Che, checking out the blue buffs right there. Yep. It is very easy to harass uh, the enemy jungler and top laner when they're trying to do buffs uh, with Annie just because of her auto range and her stun. Very, very annoying to deal with, and we've seen that uh, come into play here before. He's still looking, but... Yeah, he's waiting. He's losing a lot of uh, time for XP at the moment, but if he can get the good harassment in, it'll certainly be worth it. Yeah, they be a bit dangerous, though. Yeah, it would prevent Wisdom from immediately teleporting, or uh, not Wisdom, I mean a, a Lilac from immediately teleporting into a lane. Yeah, well, a little bit of stats on our junglers here as we see Wisdom and Lilac going for this blue buff. Right now, Wisdom... A little bit better win rate, I suppose, on that Jarvan, but we'll see. And wow, Che didn't even get a chance to get any harassment down. Yeah, but the thing about it, too, that you have to remember, Doa, is that minion wave has been dying extremely slowly in the top side because they're trying to freeze it right now. Mm. So he actually hasn't missed out on too, too much XP. Trace already down on the bottom side. Lilac and Wisdom walking up to try and break this freeze together. Yep. And we'll see if they can. Yeah, they already have, so. Uh, that's a little cute move, but Chaser comes in, tries to chase him off. Well, he manages to scare Wisdom away anyway. For well, now. Maybe they actually didn't quite break the freeze, actually. They were very yeah. close, hard to tell, but it looks like now, after a second peek, that that freeze will still be going on. Wow, and right now GBM actually with a, a few more CS than Frozen. That's not something you see every day. Well, Frozen walking up to auto harass. I was going to say, GBM yeah. just hitting him with the uh, Null Sphere. This is kind of going the opposite of how we usually see Zareth versus Kassadin early on. Well, he is 
playing with an advantage in terms of his sustain shield, as well but... and the shield. Yeah. So interesting. Actually, you know what? What happened right here is they may have. Okay, we'll be pushing back out. So. Looks like they did break okay. the freeze in the end. It w it's just hard to tell if we don't get a, pro a prolonged look at the wave yeah. as to what's going to happen. But yes, it does look like that freeze was broken, so it should be slowly OJ pushing back. walking right into Tucson and Wisdom right now. This could be bad. There's the flay. Che already under half health, and he can't even flash away. First blood goes to Wisdom, and that's the danger of that roaming is sometimes you roam <laughs> right into a brush filled with enemies. Yeah, that was a, a cute little maneuver right there, but without adequate information about where Tucson was. He probably shouldn't have been out on the map yeah. like that. The dude potential was too high in that brush. <laughs> right. And there's no way for Cassidy to respond at the moment. Meanwhile, you can get poked from by Frozen from the mid lane if he walks just a little bit over. So until GBM hits six, not a lot of potential there. Frozen yep. continuing to take that harassment, but has kept the wave shoved up and getting a little damage down, down on the turret. GBM doing a pretty good job of farming, though, overall. And Lilac, he's Mega Nar now. So Trace has a really good advantage in this situation. All, uh, in spite of everything, however, he did get down into the lane pretty early on and managed to get some CS under that turret. So Sunstar and Tucson, a little bit questionable with their push right there. Well, Trace is in really good shape now because he's able to lane against his Sivir with a chain vest so fast. Yeah, he's definitely going to be doing well. Tucson trying to get rid of some pink wards at the moment. No response from GBM. Yeah. I feel like when you hit a ward like that, you should just, like, knock it a little bit farther into the ground each time. It's like you're driving a railroad spike or something. Until it just goes away. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. You just step on wards all the time because Summoner's Rift is just absolutely every square inch has a ward underneath it. Yep. So I like it anyway. So the price that they paid for that first blood uh, was the fact that Tucson wasn't in a lane and therefore they couldn't deny Trace any CS. So yes, they got the first blood, but now they have to deal with this Mundo that did get a little bit of a CS advantage. Uh, was it worth it? Uh, about 200 gold, it seems worth it. Uh, but killing the support, not really going. You don't really need to keep Che down. Wow, look at this. Everybody's going up into the top lane right now, except for Sonstar. So, Chaser, if he tries his dive, he may regret it. Captain Jack and Che coming in. They try to go on to Lilac. There's a stun from Annie. They do get that one kill, but Che gets lit up immediately. Captain Jack in trouble now as Frozen and Wisdom are right there. And there's the ult coming in, and Frozen shows GVM that he's not the only one that can hit those. <laughs> Wow, great turnaround there. I don't think they should have dove when they saw the two people underneath the turret. Yeah, that was and risky. And it was a good read from Incredible Miracle, though, just to send that Xerath up into the top lane and try and hit that counter gank. GBM still unable to respond, but now he's six. He can start making plays himself. He's going to be lurking around some of these bushes, just seeing if he sees anything in it's that bottom side jungle. Uh, Sonstar. Okay. Popped his ult to get away. He saw GBM head uh, down towards the bottom of the map, I think, and thought to himself, better safe than sorry. Yeah, so now, the advantage for Frozen in the mid lane has caught up in terms of CS. GBM still needs to keep farming, but yep. you know, late game, as strong as some of these incredible miracle champions are, uh, Frozen is going to have a very difficult time staying alive against Cassidy and Mundo, who can just sort of run at him. And now, Lilac's going to have some tough decisions about oh. whether he's going to ult the front line back and try and prevent the back line or try and get in back on their carries. Yeah, it looks like Blue Buff is going to get handed over to Frozen if they can get the steal. No, they didn't actually. Che comes in. Che in a little bit of trouble, gets grabbed. He's going to get taken out again, and there's not much that Captain Jack can do. Wow, that Blue Buff steal successful. Wisdom yeah, picked it up. Yeah, they can respond with the Dragon now, potentially, yeah, that way. however, GBM. Starting to move down here. They may not want to get poked out. Sonstar and Tucson are still there. So I don't yeah, think they Yeah, they didn't have to take yeah. enough damage. Even with Sivir with no mana and no ult. Yeah. So again, Che walking into some unwarded territory right there. A little bit risky play from him so far, and he's paying for it. He's died three times already. Wow, and Trace actually doing a lot of damage yeah. to Lilac. Because oh, your Lilac in big trouble. He ults. Trace pops his ultimate, and Lilac doesn't need to use that flash, but look at this. Oh, wow, right Frozen on the nearly edge. caught him. Hit him once, it wasn't quite enough. And yeah. Trace going to regen up in that lane, and you can see this 
can go very poorly. Lilac is trying to get that Hex Drinker to remove some of Mundo's damage, but this this is the best lane that we've seen against Gnar so far, the best lane answer out of pretty much all top laners. Yeah, it definitely does look that way. Jace maybe too, but... Mundo is the way to go. Why not Mundo? Yeah, you can really tell he's he's learned something from watching Shy play this matchup. Yeah. Oh, more action now in the jungle. Chaser maybe in a little bit of trouble here. Turns around, can't get any damage done on anyone. And there's a kill for I am. I am up five to one in kills right now with a comfortable gold lead. They've really been making the picks work this game. Well, they're starting to snowball too. And yeah. this has been very good play from Tucson mostly. His roaming has been absolutely awesome this game. Trace with no ult for a few seconds yet. He's in trouble. He's gonna bring in wisdom as well. There's a flash from Trace. Gets locked up in the cataclysm, knocked up again, and there's a nice Another nice pick from IM. They're doing such a good job of taking advantage of every little weakness Jin Air has right now. Well, Jin Air, frankly, is just not warding well. They don't have the vision necessary to be making some of these plays. It was risky for Chaser to be at his red buff right there, but they're just chaining kill into kill into kill by having a man advantage on the map at nearly all times, and now they've taken so. a pretty substantial 2,000 gold lead here. It's starting to look a little bit scary. Well, I mean, you still have the problem of this Zerath versus this Kassadin, and they, they ha we'll have to see how they solve that, because even with this deficit in the late game, man, look at all those wards. Chaser just can't do anything right now. Yeah. Well, Jin Air can play it out a bit longer. We'll see. A surprisingly effective start, though, for IM. Well, it's it's been going their way. I mean, it's yeah. it's both good play from Incredible Miracle because they didn't play this in a way you would normally play the lane swap. Tucson is not supposed to be sitting in a brush in Upper River at that time. <laughs> that was very surprising for Che, to be sure, and not something that I think he reasonably could have expected. They just read it very nicely because they thought, well, there's this Annie in the top lane. Corky's going to be fine in doing 1v1 against the Nari. He's still going to be able to harass with the P-Bomb. So what would I do? Well, there's an immobile Zerath in the mid lane, and they want to start getting the snowball into Kassadin. Why would they not just walk Annie down to the mid and see if you can get a stun off? Yeah. They read that well, and then just sat there for the counter gank. So really smart. Oh, here we go. Try the flash box. Captain Jack in a lot of trouble. He's going to go down, and Che force use his flash to get out of the Cataclysm. And I am. Man, they have just been hitting everything. Look at the timing on Jack's flash as well. Yeah. It was down for just a few more seconds. It's about to come up right, right now. now. Yep. And so it's gonna great be a dragon. use of that cooldown timer, hitting him right at the end when he was still vulnerable. Yeah. Nice uh, flash box from Tucson as well to help lock Captain Jack down. And again, chain and kill to kill. Let's watch that. Tucson brings in wisdom. Flashbox. Oh, I guess. Oh, he played it back in. Yeah, All right. played it back into yeah. it, and there was nothing Captain Jack could do. But also, great play from Wisdom there. Yeah. Gets the gets in, and then realizes that after Jack is hit by the box, that he has no flash. So he immediately just gets on to Annie instead, forces her flash as well. So Chase, Che now down a summoner. So just great comms too that we're seeing from Incredible Miracle to know exactly what's up. They're playing very well this game. Yeah. Wow. This is not what I expected. Well, we still, you know, yes, there's a big lead for Incredible Miracle right now, but there's a long way to go in this one. And if Jin Air can make a couple of picks, they can still turn this one around as uh, we head into a bit of a pause. GBM does have the rod at this point, so a little bit on the early side, he's actually been able to CS quite well. Jack CSing also, and Lilac is caught right back up to Trace. Yeah, not too bad. He's got his Hex Drinker now. Should be making him feel a lot more comfortable against that window early on. And it looks like, I believe we saw it was a problem with the computers on the IM side, but we'll see. You know, I thought of a new Cassidy skin that I want. I really want to see happen. I'm not sure what you call it, but he'd be like Pizza Chef Cassidy, where he throws like pizzas and he's got like a pizza slicer for like a, a blade, you know? <laughs> there you go. He wears one of those chef hats. That would be awesome. Straight void pizza. He has like a, a big <laughs> sort of like mustache, you know? I love it. Great. Someday. 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 I'm tired of all the re regular Cassidy skins. Yeah. He I really mean, needs a visual update. He looks like, like crap. Cassidy needs to look all cool and like Darth <laughs> Vader with 100 times the tubes, you know? I mean, like, no, man. He just needs to throw pizzas at people. 
with Darth Vader noises every second you play him. Yeah. I think he's kind of cool looking. I don't know. He's a, he's like he is like a you know like if if you combine Darth Vader with Super Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja, <laughs> Ninja Turtles 2: Secret of the Ooze, you know at the end when he drinks the ooze right after the Vanilla Ice concert. <laughs> That's that's kind of really what Cassidy is. One of yeah. the greatest movies of our generation. It was I? Ninja, Ninja, <laughs> rap. go Ninja, go Ninja, go. <laughs> I used to have that whole song memorized when I was a kid. I just like I am Jin Go. I am <laughs> Jin Rok Go. <laughs> All right. Surprisingly relevant. <laughs> yeah. Go Ninja, go Ninja. Go. Usually yeah. we save that rap for uh, World Elites play in China these days. <laughs> Yeah, but really there's no bad time for the ninja rap. I'm trying Monty, to think of bad times. Yeah, see, there isn't <laughs> one. Any time that really anything is happening, it's time for Vanilla Ice Ninja Rap. I like how when I don't have a response, you just assume that I agree with you. Yeah, well, I mean, if you didn't, you'd, uh, you'd say something. That's usually how it goes. It's, I'd usually immediately hear a no if you disagree with me. I, I'm, I'm diversifying my responses to silent disapproval now, Noah. <laughs> well, that serves me just fine because people can't see that. That works. The internet will just assume that you agree. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Oh, yeah. Well, Chaser is waiting for an opportunity that I don't think is going to come anytime soon. Oh, uh, yeah. It doesn't look like it will, but I think he... Just trying to make something happen right now. And look at this. I am all over this blue buff. They're trying to take at least one objective right here. So they are going to just send four people over to deal with it. Operation, get blue buff. Well, got to play conservatively right now. Make sure they can't take any more advantages than they already have. So I think this is yeah. pretty wise. Well, Jenner can still win it. I mean, they Ooh, They're they going to give it to Jack, actually. Oh, okay. For the poke. I actually like that because... Look how many wards are between GBM and the blue buff right now. It's actually quite risky for him to walk there because they have no sure. vision around that area. So give it to Jack. We will be able to continue to push. Now that he has the rockets, you're hoping you can take some towers and start to normalize this gold deficit a little bit. Hmm. So I think actually that's a good plan here from Jenner, especially since Corky's about to get that Trinity Force and hit a power spike. Well, we'll see. I mean, like we were saying, Jin Air is not out of, the, out of this yet. They can bide their time. They can just kind of play safely, get some items, hang back, and contest objectives. But well, another turret falls, though, and that's more yeah, gold in the pockets of Incredible Miracle. And it's starting to be tougher. Look at all those wards. I am just doing a fantastic job controlling absolutely everything. There's nowhere really for Chaser to go right now. Wow. You know, we said they needed to improve on everything, and, and so far it looks like they have. Yeah, very dominant early performance. Jin Air going to have to adapt to this lane swap aggression. Just plays out of an incredible miracle that we're not used to seeing, and neither is Jin Air. Yeah. I mean, j not just because it's IM, but in general, they've been, they've been doing some unconventional map movement early. Well, I am just kind of taking a break for a moment. Plenty of time until Dragon's up again. Yeah, that mid turret is just hanging by a thread. Yeah. For Jin Air as well, so that's another thousand gold or so in deficit that they may be accruing quite shortly. And this game really getting out of reach for Jin Air at the moment. Yeah. GBM still relatively close in CS to Frozen at the moment. You know who? Uh, Wisdom's play reminds me of this game. Who? Is uh, Svenskren from SK. Oh, really? okay. He's a jungler who uses himself more or less as a human ward with constant jungle invades. Uh, he has a really weird way of playing the jungle that we don't usually see, but Wisdom definitely looks a lot like Svenskren. If you had showed me this game without IDs, I would have thought that it was Svenskren playing. Really? Yeah, for sure. Do you have him on your LCS fantasy team? I don't. Oh, me neither. Oh well, I've got shook. Who's my jungler? I don't know. I don't know who your jungler is. Oh, it's Yankos. Ah, okay. That's right. I see. Oh, Trace. Still trying to fight Lilac, but just getting continuously pushed back. 
at Hex Trick are doing work. And look at this, he's actually got a uh, uh, blade as well, too. Uh, oh boy. Trace pops the ult. Lilac uh, is going to become spite. Meganar. Uh, Lilac turns around onto Chaser. Look at that damage, though. Lilac can actually get a kill here. Whoa, the ult comes in for Zareth. He manages to pick off Chaser. And now Trace in a bit of trouble as well, too, but Lilac turning. Oh boy, they've got Mundo cornered. <laughs> Yeah, Lilac is oh, going to get wow. the kill right there. Great contribution from Frozen. Nailed Able to just building. to walk up there because he has total vision. Yeah. Very safe play of Lilac turning that one around. Wow, where is this incredible miracle wow. bend I this was, season? Chaser should not have gone in on that second Q. You saw how much damage he took from that Gnarls yeah. immediately getting him completely outplayed. So now with that extra couple of K of gold looking pretty desperate for Jin Air. Well, yeah, Jin Air. Starting to look a little bit nervous now. Starting to make plays that I, or try to make plays that I don't think they would make. Yeah, so he was on the verge of transforming. So once this pops, there's the chilling spike coming in. He's immediately stunned, then stunned again. Wow. And also hit with the boulder toss immediately. Has to, can't quite get out of the Zareth ultimate. And this last Zareth ult actually saving Lilac right there. Otherwise, he was going to go down. Yeah. And Trace would have won that duel even in the minion <laughs> line. And Trace caught between a rock toss in a hard place. Yep. <laughs> well, Mundo, he's pretty strong, but he can't run very fast. He's got tiny legs. Now, Janair finally, at long last, gets control over their topside jungle again. So they've actually managed to clear out the wards. Now they've got to make a series of picks if they want to get back into this game. The wards are still really good in, in the bottom jungle of Janair for IM. Yeah, but they need to get this turret down. They need to start controlling Lilac. Lilac has adapted to the Sunfire by going Blade of the Ruined King as a second item, so happy just to keep split pushing at the moment. Yeah. See if this works out in the long run, because late game this Blade really not going to be very helpful. Sacrificing that blue buff. GBM motioning up towards the top side. We do see Gnar just going through the jungle at the moment, and it's just all about playing defense while Trace tries to put some damage down onto this topside turret. Yeah. They really need a tower right now. Well. You know, they're six cold down. If they get the outer ring, they'll only be 3k. So a pretty critical moment for Janair. This is the make or break. If they're going to come back, they have to start doing something. Captain Jack farming in this bot lane. Wisdom and Tucson. Ooh, Sansar's right there as well, too. See if they can make a pick on him. It's hard to lock down a Corky, but they might be able to find an angle. Nah, he knows they're there now. Yeah, just further jungle invasion from Incredible Miracle, pushing yep. back wow. all the way to the tier two. Nice poke on the Che. It's gonna make him harder, or it's gonna make it harder for him to get a full combo off. Yeah, Trace. Just trying to run some protection on the turret right there. Lilac in the meantime pushing back, and he's going to be going quite quickly with this blade. And here we go. Here we go, Jay. Well, he has to use that stun on the Tucson. Tucson flash forces a flash from Jay. That death sentence would have hit for sure if Jay hadn't burned that summoner. And even with the wards, they can't actually protect their red buff right there. Yep. Lilac just dealing some damage to the turret. Frozen oh boy. coming out with some of that poke. Trace has no MR right now. Yeah, it looks like IM really wants this tier two turret up in top lane. Jinair responds, can they save it? Looks like they can from this way, but wow, the poke just getting ridiculous for Frozen. Honestly, Frozen should just use his ult right now and poke him off the tower. He could whenever he wants to, but look at this. There we go. There's the ult, gonna try to get Chain. He gets him with the third volley. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> Yeah, this game has just been snowballed out of control, mostly thanks to Tucson and Wisdom, who have both had great games, playing very unpredictably, yeah. and preying on Jinair being a little bit on autopilot right here. They're doing a beautiful job of closing out. How about this, though? I mean, not trying to come from behind onto Captain Jack, but, you know, Jinair did lose their first game last match as well, too, and came back and won the next two, so I wouldn't count them out just yet of this match, but I am showing some really surprising strength here in game one. Well, Jinair 2-0 their last match. Oh, I, oh I, I think I meant the one before that then. So, uh, but other than that, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, 
This is a very risky situation, and, but they've been snowballed on very effectively yep. by champions that take a while to ramp up here in terms of Mundo and Kasten taking some rather aggressive and ill-advised dives on the top lane, but you have to hand it to, to IM that they have absolutely snowballed this beautifully, getting great vision down, able to play the top side of the map so well and continue to force their advantage. And Jyn with only one kill and zero objectives so far this match. And I like the adaptation that Lilac has too with this Blade of the Ruined King. So this this Mundo Nar matchup is developing in very interesting ways the more time we see it. Even though of course the Nar will be quite squishy, there's nobody to burst him down right now because of how poor all the members of Jin Air are. No yeah. money in order to make that transition. We do see Jack trying to build into we'll see if it's a Bloodthirst or a Blade next. I, I would assume it's actually going to be a blade just to peel against Sivir's ult. Yeah. Well, that's what we've normally seen Corky's go for in this kind of A lot more bloodthirsts are Corky's uh, recently, though, so I, I've been intrigued by that mm. trend. I feel like in this case you have to just default to the traditional safer thing, you know? Oh, GBM. Wow, getting really poked by Frozen. Well, Frozen is pretty darn strong right now. Yep. Trace still trying to split this one, this one out. Frozen taking some more shots at Jin Air behind their turret. There's another one. Yep, he can pretty much just do that all day. Well, fortunately for Jin Air, they do have a shield out of that turret, but even yeah. so. Oh, oh okay. there's the ult. Can he get him? Oh, not quite. Pushing Chaser back, though, and that's going to give him that tier two turret. All you have to do, just ult in advance. Don't worry yeah. about it. Trace. Oh, there's the ult. Trace pinned against the wall. He's regaining health because of that ultimate. Running back just has to teleport away. Lilac actually trying to predict the flash right there yeah. by hitting the boulder. So it wasn't just a miss. He thought there was going to be a flash coming in. And Trace has to teleport out. That's Still no nice turrets edge. for Janair. Another good edge, too, now having that TP advantage for IM. 10,000 gold ahead at 24 minutes. Wow, and I am in position right away to take this dragon, and nobody's going to stop them. Just fantastic vision control from I am. You really have to compliment them. Look at how many wards they have this game around the objectives at exactly the right time. They know where they have the pressure. Yeah. In the beginning, it was on that top side, especially after we saw the top laners go there because they were in two winning matchups, get the pressure down, and then they killed Chaser in his own red buff because they had so much control over that side of the map. Wisdom and Tusa just able to walk in right as that red buff was up. True enough. And Lilac just having a monster game on Nar, no pun intended. Battle for the Krug. Ooh, it goes to Trace, though. He is the winner of the Krug. It's true. It's his Krug. Now and forever. Uh, hardly any damage onto the mid lane turret here. Well, things yeah. looking really desperate. Or Jyn Air in game one. Yeah, they're going to need to win uh, a big team fight and then take a turret or two. I mean, I really don't see another way for them to oh, they can't start to crawl fight. out of this. They can't team fight against Nar and Jarvan. That's not an option, especially yeah. with the lead that IM has at the moment. They have to create picks. That's why they're just waiting in these brushes. But Sawstar with the orb will find them quite easily. Manages to get the correct read on that situation. And Jyn Air will have to back out once more. And wow, this is dangerous. No teleport for Trace and the threat of a Baron very real. So actually, they could just start the Baron right now if they want to, or at least bait it extremely heavily. No, and kind of do whatever they want. TP advantage, they really should just start this. Mundo has no way of stopping Nars teleport. Well, they might after they take down Captain Jack. Oh wow, they got him in the Cataclysm. There's the flash. Summon out of the way, and Frozen picks oh. that one up easily from downtown. Wow, great coordination there. Again, just hunting down Captain Jack, even when he has a splash up. Sonstar using that Sivir ult to create the pick. Now it's five versus three of this Baron with the teleport advantage, if you include that. And it'll be all too easy, I am. Oh, Janair coming in. There's some low health members on I am. They get the Baron. And it doesn't look like Janair wants to try to fight this. No, nothing they can do right now. Janair. It's just about thinking about the next game at this point. This is way too far gone and has been for some time, but especially now that the Baron is up, three dragons on IM, it's just been an absolute 
crushing victory from Incredible Miracle right here. Yeah, well, Jenner, nearly a perfect game. Yeah, nearly, quite nearly a perfect game. Very surprising from Janair coming in tonight, but I think they got a little bit lazy, and there was a lot of face checking, inadequate warding from Janair, and really, Wisdom and Tucson's aggression has won them this game. Now, that said, Doa, yeah. this is a very risky way to play in League of Legends. This is how you play League of Legends if you're the KT Arrows in summer. Now, you either have very yeah, good wins. Works. Well, they, they narrowly <laughs> won that final, Doa. Yeah. But um, it's the, the problem is that if you do this, and Tucson and Wisdom get seen by a ward, and Janair just collapses on you when you're in their jungle, you can easily lose the game as well. So it's high risk, high reward. This is incredible miracle playing high risk, high reward. And if Che hadn't walked into the river right there, Trace would have gotten an insane CS advantage onto Mundo, and they would have gotten nothing back for it, right? So coming into the next game, I think Janair can really you know, if they play slightly more cautiously, they can actually just prey on IM's overaggression if they try and play the same style again. Well, we'll see. IM pushing out with that Baron buff. Wow, they caught Captain Jack with that death sentence. He got out. Chaser kicking Wisdom away. Whoa! Captain Jack plays some Dance Dance Revolution, dodges the ultimate from Frozen, but they can't save the inhibitor. And it's just going to be a methodical defeat from IM at this point. Yeah, before people start saying to, oh, you know, why did they let him have Jarvan and Narn? That really had nothing to do with the outcome of this game. Yes, those are strong picks, but the fact that they, I mean, there hasn't been team fighting at all. Yeah. So it's just been a snowball courtesy of Wisdom and Two Sins individual play mostly. Able to make some picks, and uh, Janera kind of giving them a lot of opportunities for those picks too. Che really having an off game. Yeah, I don't get it. Oh no, and it doesn't get any better here. A lot of damage drops the Tibbers on the Sonstar. Sonstar manages the Spell Shield, a bit of the damage. There's Trace getting pulled into the box low, survives with the ult for just a moment until Lilac comes in with the kill there. Sonstar manages to finish off Che, and now that turn trouble, they lock down GBM. There's the Zonias, that's just gonna let them get back on the Captain Jack. Captain Jack turning for some damage, takes out Tucson, and GBM goes down two kills for Frozen. There goes another inhibitor, and they can turn right onto the Nexus turrets now. This one looks like it's over. Chaser manages to safeguard to award in the uh, fountain. And they'll make it out. It's not really much of a fountain anymore, is it? Or ever was, I don't know. <laughs> there it is, GG, an incredible miracle. Actually wins game one against the Jin Air Green Wings. A pretty atypical misstep by Jin Air. And well, this they pay game, for it big time. This game is pretty textbook as to why, at the professional level, you don't do things when you have inadequate information. Yeah. They attempted that dive without knowledge. I mean, and they even saw Wisdom walk under the turret with the NAR, but they didn't know where Tucson was. They didn't know where Frozen was, and it ended up in a really poor trade and uh, getting this NAR back into the game when they had a top lane advantage. These are all yeah. things. This was just, this is sloppy play by Janir and good capitalization on assumptions that are made by professional teams by Incredible Miracle and playing actively after that. Their closure was very good. Well, it shows you that even the teams that people would say are some of the lesser teams in this league in Korea have the ability to take a game easily if they get the opportunity. Well, anything can happen in a single game, right? We run right. these best of threes of and we run you know, a longer season now so that we do have a better sample size to seriously judge these teams. I expect Janair to adjust their play coming into and adjust their picks advance coming into this next match. I still think they're, they're, gonna the, need to. they're the favorites in this set, but. Yep, oh, great game for Frozen. Using that signature GBM champion this season to do a ton of damage to champions. And Janair looking understandably upset, but. Yeah, as long as they don't go on tilt after this, I do feel that yeah. they can just play a bit more conservatively. And in a longer game, I think Jin Air will make fewer mistakes. But you really do have to hand it to IM. This has been by far their best performance of the season. Absolutely. We'll see if they can keep it up in game number two. Can they get the 2-0, or is Jin Air going to tie things up here on Champion Spring? When we come back, find out.